everyone. Welcome to Special Interest with Bob and Donna, Donna Durasmo and Bob Banfelder. Uh, those of you who don't know who we are, uh, I'm a retired educator with the New York City Board of Education. Bob is an award-winning outdoor writer and crime thriller novelist. Seven of his novels deal with uh, serial killers, so you might find that uh, pretty interesting. Pretty wild stuff. Pretty wild stuff. Okay, um, today we're going to continue with our fly tying series. Uh, last time we looked at the uh, Bob's creation, the unique Bobby B's black and white bullseye fly. Today we're going to talk about the gimp, which is featured in his fishing book entitled The Fishing Smart Anywhere Handbook for Saltwater and Freshwater, which is available on Amazon in paperback as well as eback format. And Bob is going to be tying the gimp, a fantastic freshwater fly. So we're going to be moving from our living room into the den in just a moment and we'll be back. Okay, so we are going to tie the gimp, and as Donna mentioned, I'll elaborate on it a little bit. The gimp is truly a deadly fly. We hear people throw out lethal and deadly and the best and blah, blah, blah. Uh, the gimp belongs in everyone's arsenal. It belongs in your fly box. It is truly a lethal, deadly fly for fresh water, specifically your trout, your brookies, your browns, and your rainbow trout, in addition to panfish. So we'll get started. So I'm going to um, pick up my uh, thread here, and I want to talk about this thread for a moment. Um, I really love the Dansvilles, that's, d in case the camera doesn't pick this up, this is a bit warm, it's uh, worn, this is D-A-N-V-I-L-L-E apostrophe S, Danville's Flat Waxed Nylon in a 100-yard spool. So, even though this is waxed, what I like to do is to put more wax on it. So I'm going to reach for a tube of wax here and this is Overton's Wonder Wax. You can see it's practically running out here. Okay, I've been using this for years and of course I have a, a backup. So I'm just going to apply just a little bit more wax. I just like to build up a body with this. And as an aside here, I'm going to reach for another wax. Told you I had a backup. This is Waspies. Uh, w Wapsy. Wapsy. Thank you, Donna. W-A-P-S-I. A premium dubbing wax. So, I'm going to start here. I'm going to start near the bend of the hook. And we covered this pretty thoroughly uh, for beginners. Uh, in that other video we did, but I'm going to start at the bend of the hook here. And my garbage pail here, handy. And I'm going to wrap down to about an eighth of an inch behind the eye of the hook. We don't really have to do this step in a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, in my recipe. Uh, for the gimp, for this freshwater application, I tie, I tell the reader uh, to tie the tail on right at the bend. You could do that, but it's nice to build up a body, especially if you're new at this and you don't want this sliding all over the place. And again, we're not in a hurry. As I mentioned last time, I could do this in seconds, but we'll take it nice and slow. Okay. I'm going to leave a little bit more, come back on this. I could have tied the tail in at that point, but I just want to play a little bit here, 
for those of you who are really not new to this, see how threads and wax and hooks and everything works. So I'm going to reach for a feather, a hen feather in gray. I could use this gray or this combination gray and brown. I want it from the hen feather. Why? Because it's soft and it absorbs water as opposed to a rooster feather which is stiffer and uh, would give the fly a bit more buoyancy if you will if you um, tied it with uh, deer hair and uh, we're not going to be doing that. So you can see that I just pulled off some of the hackle material here. And you don't need a lot. Matter of fact, little is better than too much. We're not building a paintbrush. We're building a fly, a delicate fly, simulating a nymph. Simulating, excuse me, simulating a nymph. Uh, an immature insect. Okay, so last time I should really reinforce this. I want my material on top of the hook. I don't want it underneath it to the side. You can see that this is a little bit to the side there, so I can simply move it over here. We have this pretty much on top now, and we're going to secure that. We're going to wrap this in. Okay, we talked about the pinch wrap last time. If you are not familiar with that term, go to my other video which covers it pretty thoroughly. But what you want to do is to capture the thread between your thumb and your forefinger, your index finger. Okay, and we're going to wrap that. Okay, and there we have it nice tail. Okay, now I'm going to take some gray yarn, probably pulled this out of Donna's sewing box many a year ago, <laughs> and you can see that this yarn here has two discernible threads, so I'm just going to take a piece of one. And we're going to tie this in, okay? And what we're going to do is to build up a cigar shape. So what I want to do is start here by the tail near the bend. And with that pinch wrap, say I'm doing it loosely, not tight. If I do it tight, it'll go off to the side or on the bottom. I do it loosely. Help it along here, loosely. Okay. Now I have that on top. Let's check it out. Okay, it's not on a side. Could even be <clears throat> pushed over a little bit more. Okay. What we're going to do is to cover this and wrap to that point. Don't worry about this sticking out. That's going to be covered. Point behind the eye, about an eighth of an inch, something like that. And we're going to start wrapping this now. And we're going to build a cigar shape. Okay, bring it up to that point. That's close enough. Now we're going to go over what we did and we're going to fill in that space behind what we have here because we want to go to the bend of the hook. Another one. Cover that black thread. And we come forward again. Okay. 
Now, if I keep going this fashion, it's going to be flat. So I'm going to give a couple more wraps here. I'm going to come back toward the middle, come back again. You see what's happening. We're getting that football shape, if you will. will. Okay, maybe you'll do a little bit more here, a little bit more. Build this up, build this up. Okay, and I'm going to come back, whoops, to this point and secure it. A couple wraps here. And trim this off here. And wrap this tighter. Okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, what I'm going to do here to kind of build in a lesson, why I love this thread I mentioned this in the other video if this gets if I'm tying you want to see if you can capture this now you see how this is widening out here so if I'm tying very very small hooks this is going to be too much so I can simply spin this and see how it tightens up nicely and I'm going to come down to just behind the eye of the hook I left that space, but I'm going to come back up here. Okay, now to stop this from turning, if I'm doing other things or I want to explain something, you don't want this spinning around, simply come down to the base of your vise and uh, that will stay in position while I'm yakking away about this, that, or the other thing. For the gimp, the magic of the gimp and why it's a deadly fly, it has to do with a couple of feathers. And what I'm going to reach for is a cape from the Lady Amherst pheasant. If you remember from that other video, we used just this black and white feather here. And uh, I did point out the magic is if you pull one of these out, behind it, actually I pulled two out, we'll take this one here, behind this feather, behind the Lady Amherst pheasant at the base, parallel to its base, is the magic feather, the gimp. So I'm going to peel that off and I'm going to put that aside here because I have two already picked. And what I do is I don't waste anything because these are used to tie my uh, black and big black and white bullseye fly. And I'll just put this in a package here along with others. Okay, I might even uh, size them. I might have feathers for very, very tiny hooks, or I might have even bigger feathers for a, a little bit bigger gimp. But this size hook, and that's very important, we want to know what we're tying on. We are tying on a mustad hook. And here is the number on 94840. It's a number six hook. Okay, got a box of them, and that's what's in the vise. I generally tie this on an 8. 8 being a higher number than a 6, but the higher you go in the number, it's the smaller the hook. So an 8 is smaller than a 6. Okay, we covered this last time, but I'm using a little bit bigger hook for demonstration purposes. You can see this better, okay? And that's why I picked... Before we got started, I picked a couple of bigger gimp feathers. So I'm going to put two of these together, one on top of the other. Yeah, let's see, I'm going to use my knee here. One on top of the other. 
and I'm going to place it between the gray and the black here. It's going to rest on top of the hook. I'm going to tie those in. I'm going to come up a little bit further on this thread. And notice, Donna, if you can home in on that, notice how I have the thread wrapped twice around the bobbin here. And the reason for that, it gives me a little bit more torque. It won't slip as I'm tying here. So I'm going to go loosely. I want to keep it on top. I don't want it to fall over to the side or on the bottom. Loosely. And then I can tighten up here. Now let's see. Okay, it's nice and flat on top. What you could play around with, some of you who are, uh, you know, pretty skilled at this, you could go underneath the two feathers and raise uh, the top, raise the feathers. There's another fly I have there. I'll come back to that, but it's not necessary. Uh, so we have our flat, feathers flat atop the hook, and I'm going to trim and trim here. Okay, and tighten this up. I'm slipping a little bit here. And we're going to cover those stems. Or not stems, but the, uh, yeah, stems. Okay, build up. This is such an easy fly to tie. But guess what? You won't see this in a catalog. You won't see my other one in the uh, cat my big black and white bullseye fly. It's, I think, it's material, it's, they would have to get a lot of capes and they would uh, have to be dealing with these, pulling these out. Uh, maybe, I, I, I'm just really surmising now, but it, it's just uh, not cost effective is what I'm trying to say long-windedly. This is why I believe they don't get in, into it. Um, if you're a beginner starting out, maybe you don't want to buy a cape with all, all the feathers on here. You can buy these. You can buy just this neck, these black and white feathers with the gimp in the back, uh, probably for about 10 to $12 today. So, uh, this I picked up. This was a steal. I found this in the back of a fly shop many years ago. I think I paid $10 for the whole thing. And uh, I use, we'll talk about this maybe later on, but I will do a gimp version for salt water and I use these. And Donna, you can, I say green, I say emerald. Uh -huh. What's a nice word for that? Iridescent, iridescent, emerald, gr iridescent emerald green. Think of iridescent color. and insect, two eyes. This is the magic for salt water. This is for fresh water, okay? So now what we're going to do is to take, again, either or, uh, being that we use the gray here, we're gonna stay with the gray and uh, I'm gonna take I'm gonna get near the stem here Clean that up a bit. Get this even. And we're going to put a collar. We're going to put a collar on here. I'm going, going up higher because I want to be a bit thinner. Okay. going to put this collar on here. One, two, nice and loose. Okay. Doesn't matter if this goes over to the side because it's going to be wrapped. So I just want to secure this. Give it a couple more wraps. Thin this out a bit. Rest this down here. 
and we're going to cut this off. And now we're going to wrap this around the shank here. Once, twice. That is it. You do not want to build this up into a bunch of whiskers, okay? Come around here. Once, twice. Cut this off here. Wet thumb, forefinger. Come back, hold these out of the way, and start building your head. Now, you can make this bullet shaped. You can keep it flat. You can uh, make a ball, if you will. It, it really doesn't matter. Uh, it's more of an aesthetic thing. Uh, but I wouldn't build too much. You can see that uh, we are pretty much there. We have our tail. We have our uh, two feathers resting on top on the cigar-shaped body. And uh, what we'll do now is to secure this, secure these wraps with a whip finisher. And we covered this last time in the show. You can see I have a, I, we talked about this. If, I'm, if I have a big fly, big salt water fly, nine inches or so, and I gotta get back in here, I use the long one. But, you know, for something like this, we're going to. Oops. Use the uh, short one. So. I want this thinner here. So it's opening up a little bit. Okay, the thread is not all the way up, nor back. It's kind of like in the middle, and I'm going to just do one, two. That should hold it nicely. Give it a little bit of a snug fit here. Now, we're almost done, but we're going to make this fly bulletproof because when you get several fish on here, and it's not a one-shot deal, I've caught as many as six, seven fish, uh, nice trout before it got beat up. Um, I want to, and as a matter of fact, we'll show later on the teeth of some big trout can destroy this thread and unravel this. So we want to make this bulletproof. So we're going to take a piece of cardboard here. We're going to go to a two-part epoxy, a two-part five-minute epoxy, which we used in the other film also, uh, video also. And all, I can, you need just a minuscule amount. I can't even see. That's, that's even like too much, but for demonstration purposes, we'll just make this much, much more than I need. Okay. And I mentioned this last time. I took fingernail polish and I made that red. I made this red on this side because if you put it on the wrong side, you're going to have a tough time getting this open next time. So put this out of harm's way. I'm going to reach for a toothpick here, and I'm going to mix this up good. Okay, if I were to put this on here now, that is so much it would be all over the, uh, the, the eye, the head, maybe even touch the uh, hackle collar. So we don't want to do that. So I take my dubbing needle, 
and I take a small amount. Okay, and we're about done. All right. Okay, so we're going to look uh, at an assortment of GIMPs. Different sizes. And the very, very tiny ones I just tie with one uh, wing, not two. Otherwise, it would be too, too much. I even tied some without wings. <laughs> but that wouldn't be a gimp. Okay, so you want to home in on this? Well... Come back to the other one we were looking at, a bigger one. Back to the vise again. I'll turn this slowly, Donna. Okay, why don't we take them out now uh, into the hallway and show them the uh, gimp that caught a nice rainbow trout. Okay, so here's a 19 inch rainbow that the gimp that the gimp uh, nailed and um, that's pretty much it. We've gotten rainbows, brookies, browns. This is my personal best on a, um, a rainbow. That's why I had it mounted. Otherwise it's pictures or just uh, stories. <laughs> True stories. Okay. When I started fly tying many a year ago, I bought a kit. And in a lot of my article writing addressing fly tying, I tell people stay away from the kit because when you get a kit, you generally get a vice that's. Uh, Nothing short of okay. Um, just get your equipment piecemeal is my recommendation. Save your money, get a good vise, a vise that you can turn around 360 degrees as opposed to a vise that will probably come with an inexpensive kit that you really can't turn. Um, but in that kit was this booklet, and this booklet was worth the price of the <laughs> kit because I learned about some dynamite flies, and I take no credit like Bobby B's uh, big black and white bullseye fly. This was created by Lacey Gia, as we mentioned inside, and uh, Erwin D. Sias, S-I-A-S, wrote an article several years later in Outdoor Life titled, They Go for the Gimp. And uh, again, it's just a lethal fly. Um, What's the title of the book? The title of the book, Practical Flies and Their 
construction. This is the revised edition. I don't know if you can get this today. Do you happen to I know, don't know. Well, fan? I don't know. Yeah. But anyways, this information is in my book, the germane pertinent information is in the uh, in the book. I uh, just uh, mention a thing. Um, the authors say here, we recommend using the Amherst tippets. This is what I was talking about. The Lady Amherst pheasant is what you want, whether it be the cape or the neck specifically to tie the gimp. Uh, as we have found them to be more satisfactory from this uh, standpoint of uniformity. Um, they're talking about that neck, that cape from the Lady Amherst pheasant as opposed to the golden pheasant. The golden pheasant has to tip it on the back too, but it's just not the magic. It's just not the right uh, color, the dun color of that Lady Amherst uh, pheasant. Um, that's pretty much it, I think. Okay. I think All right, folks. Much well, it. Um, if you can't get a copy of Practical Flies and Their Construction by Lacey E. Gee and Erwin D. Sias. Uh, How to Construct the Gimp is in the Fishing Smart Anywhere Handbook for Saltwater and Freshwater, written by none other than Bob Banfelder. <laughs> um, uh, his credentials include um, being a member of the New York State Outdoor Writers Association and the Outdoor Writers Association of America, and he also has the accolade of uh, a Lifetime Achievement Award by uh, Who's Who in America. So we hope you enjoyed. Um, we'll provide you with the link to his other fly uh, video. These flies are available too. Oh yes, they are available on eBay if you are interested. If you are not a tire, uh, just uh, plug in the GIMP. And, uh, and next time uh, for another show, we're going to be tying the... Um, a salt water version okay. of the gimp, uh, which I created. Okay, which and is another, for salt water, it is a deadly fly for striped bass, for big blue fish, and I mean big blue fish. Uh, and as a matter of fact, it's April 15th, tax day, but it's also the first day of striped bass season. Okay. So we are timely, folks, right? Timely, <laughs> and especially this time of year, be on those streams uh, and ponds for your, uh, the big yeah. three in terms of trout, your rainbows, your brookies, and your browns. That fly belongs again, I'll reiterate, in your arsenal. Okay, there you have it folks. Uh, please subscribe to our channel, Special Interests with Bob and Zana, and if you found this interesting and informative, please give us a thumbs up. And we'll see you next time on Special Interests with Bob and Donna. Take care.